All right. So um, I just want to recap quickly what we said on the Twitter spaces so we can get started with the actual, you know, activities here um, and not deal with technical issues the whole time. So, you know, as I was saying, the you know, Klima DAO is the result of a combination of three different organizations that are ostensibly uh, competitors, but came together to do something that they couldn't do alone. Um, and those three organizations, once again, are Offsetra, Creole, and Toucan. Um, and if I if I remember correctly, double checking your core, that there were five people associated with Offsetra, three with Creole, and four with Toucan. Is that right? On oh, that, correct. Four with four with Creole, if uh, you count me also, because you know we yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. Later, uh, yeah. So you guys Gee, you really are arguing now, Charger. <laughs> no, I. I this historic. Let me see. Oh wow, the 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 little yapper <laughs> photo. That's just totally killing my computer. I don't know why. I had to I had to turn it off. Well, I'll turn it back on later. There you go. So we have Charger. Full, full form for two can of Satra Creole and the main man Chaz, who is an affiliated but very malleable. Yeah, I just yeah. have a this username. Is, yeah, this, this username. I don't oh, know okay. you need to choose again unless you start. Yeah, I really blew away this protection program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's 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 correct, Marcus. So you, like, you handled the, the history quite well. Um, that is, like, fundamentally, like, at any given time, like, we were all working on some piece of the puzzle, right? So, um... We all had like the earliest version of the tech. Um, there's the video I showed you guys in Lisbon, which is from 2019, where I tokenized the first Vera credit. Um, if you want to go look them up, they're all on Polygon. Uh, there's about 8,000 tons under the Creole t- design CVCUs. Um, have a look. I mean, it's there. And, and anyway, so we did that in 2019. Um, that was kind of like the earliest touch of it. Offsetra was at the same time building like all the cool like partnerships and like you know helping out artists like Carbon FYI came out all those tooling so they had like all the like carbon side of it and then Toucan was like very much the the dev shop they were like the brains who like really took my original design and built it into something scalable um, which you see and know as today is the Toucan protocol. So, I mean, collectively, we had everything, right? So, we, we had all the pieces to, to put it together and, and, and build something really, really sophisticated. Um, the piece that we were missing was, like, how do we how do we build liquidity for the, the carbon market? And we were we were trying – we had, like, all sorts of ideas. In March 2021, we were already, like, thinking about, like, how do we – like, we were meeting every few weeks, like, hey, like, what do we think about? And that's when we kind of discovered, stumbled across Olympus. And we said, wow, this is really interesting, like – what if we applied this to the carbon market, which we all knew, you know, reasonably well? Uh, we knew the challenges. We knew exactly like all the things that could possibly be done with it. And we started like iterating. Okay, like you do this, do that, do this. Can we, can we, you know, modify this and then swap out the underlying? We even had many calls with Zeus and Apollo. Those guys helped us quite a bit. Uh, I reached out to them very early and said, like, guys, we were thinking of doing this for carbon. What do you think? They provided a lot of really valuable feedback. Uh, they help us even to this day. So, like, I'm super, super grateful. I mean, that's that's basically the spirit of DeFi right there. So, right, like, you if you build on someone else's ideas, you gotta like, you gotta reference them and you gotta talk about them. You gotta be basically like, take credit where credit is due, right? And so, anyway, so we got all that together, and then yeah, then things started rolling. Like, we started building everything. Uh, we started doing all the test nets. You guys remember my really, really awful uh, early design. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have a screenshot somewhere of the I like Star Wars this. one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Star Wars. It was it was terrible until until Atmos fixed it. It was uh, it was it was not good. It was it was it was half cocked at best. So, um, but yeah, and then and then you know we we basically at that point in time like everything we did we we discussed endlessly like or, or we had weekly almost bi weekly calls like three four hours long. We were talking about everything all the possible considerations about everything we were building uh, um it just it took so much of our collective efforts um to this day i think about it and i'm like wow like it, there's this it's impressive like it, it's marcus's point like before that we were kind of all competitors like i remember chaz like thinking he was like doubting creole he was like who are these guys they're kind of weird and then i reached out to us and i was like guys i need help i really really need help i can't find you know this many tons i need them for this and and, you know, a lot of the, the early stuff that we were working on, like, you know, for instance, like one, so if you want to roll it even further back, like 
Um, Creole helped with one of the biggest raises in refi before Clean Me Down even existed was Open Earth Foundation. Open Earth Foundation raised $6.6 million at a project called Carbon Drop. Um, if you want to go look it up, you can you can go have a look. Um, and we had to offset all the art pieces um, with, with that. Like there was Beeple in there, Fuck Render, um, I forget all the rest of them. It was all, all sort of, of good. It ended with Justin Sun buying Beeple's, uh, you know, thing for $6 million. And that ultimately set OEF up for life. Um, and they operate today based on that, that money. And then shortly after that, uh, F2 Pool reached out to us through Daniel. Um, and he, he basically wanted us to do the similar, similar type deal. Uh, we were kind of looking at, you know, doing a bunch of offsets. They wanted to do like a very large amount. And he reached out to me and said, hey, like, can we find offsets? And that's when I reached out to offsets. I was like, I don't have this many on hand. I need, like, I, I think I need 70,200 offsets. Um, so I, I was like, can you guys help me? And that's when we all started kind of working together. Because like, it, was, it was like, oh, like, these guys are cool. They 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 want to they wanna work on, on stuff together. And I had no problem. I was like, guys, just, like, hand it over. Let's, let's kind of figure out how to work together. So... That was kind of like the early history of, of what we were working on. And then from that point on, we kind of all kept in touch and, and then, you know, started working all the stuff that we work on today. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, that's, that's kind of the brief history. I mean, if you want to know a bit about myself, like I'm, I'm an electrical environmental engineer. Uh, I've been working in crypto for five, six years now. I built everything from production grade stuff to prototypes to everything in between. Before this, yeah, I worked on Creole, uh, where we built carbon neutral building systems, so building control systems, actually. Um, so basically, they would you could control any building from your phone, all operated on chain with fantastic statistics and data tracking, and the entire thing carbon offset itself in real time. So that was actually where we built the first carbon offsets on chain was uh, for that purpose. I, I needed a way to have programmatic offsetting very early with the hardware devices that we were installing in sort of buildings. Um, and then, and then kind of, you know, that that predated a lot of the history of, of what we're doing today. And then before that, I worked on like a number of other things, uh, a lot of startups that, you know, ultimately went nowhere, but it was, it was, you know, cool stuff. A lot of, a lot of really interesting, um, things that I was always been, always been passionate about the space and always been passionate about what we work on and always, always interested in improving. Uh, I think that's like, you know, seeing improvements on designs and, and all the stuff that we work on is always really cool. I showed you guys in, in Lisbon on the weekend, like, all the cool, all the diagrams we had, like, all that stuff. It was funny. Like, there, there's, it's it's fun going back on the, the old path. There's, I think, if you want, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Drew, there's, uh, there's the, uh, if you look up Creole, Offsetra, F2 Pool, and Vera, you'll be able to find our original retirement certificate for the original transfer. I think that's, it's up there somewhere. Yeah. 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 Project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watching this week and all that stuff is all just a, a you know a continuation of that. But I'll, I'll I'll pause here and let somebody else kind of talk about their their history. Hello, hello. We have the lawyer. Uh, yes. Let's introduce us some a little for those uh, who would like to know uh, you know about history and your background a little bit. Yeah. So docs. So my name is George Alessandro Donadanioni, as you can find me on LinkedIn. As C3 lawyer, I will also add my position on Klima. So, yeah, uh, we're very passionate about this. Uh, I just wanted to give you like a quick introduction. I really am a lawyer. It's not just a nickname. <laughs> I'm a lawyer in two countries. And uh, I work for five years in a very, very big firm, actually the biggest in Italy, as I'm Italian. You know, you can tell by, the, by my accent, also someone else pointed out. And then I moved to to blockchain in different projects uh, in 2017 I met Archie and uh, we clicked right after so we started like doing consultancy together where of course I was taking care of the legal side and he was taking care of smart contracts um, I also wrote a book about blockchain legal that you can find it on Amazon maybe if there is still stock I don't know honestly and it went pretty well. Uh, blockchain is my big passion since 2017, as I said. And I always try to do something that it was like compatible with, you know, uh, the legal side of the things and the blockchain, because for me, there's a huge potential. There used to be a huge potential and it's still a huge, uh, huge potential. 
So then, yes, I mean, the rest, I think it's history. I mean, Archie, I think that planned out pretty well everything that happened. Uh, with Creel, the the system that he was doing, the managing of, uh, well, I think he can explain a little bit better what he did, if you're interested in. And then we get together in 2021. At the beginning, it was, I think, March. And we got all together and we basically, every one of us had a different like knowledge and talent. So we decided to get together and everyone like give their contribution to, to this project that it is. So, of course, I started taking care of all the legal side uh, and all these kind of things, which uh, I was familiar with. And basically, you know, here we are. Uh, um, I just wanted to say something that for me, it, 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 it's very important for me. Uh, you know, we didn't make like, a, a, at least personally, I'm talking about, you know, person myself, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that everyone can also like, can see themselves in what I'm saying. So basically... It was not like, uh, you know, some some people, uh, um, you know, in general, maybe think that anonymity is just a way because maybe you want to uh, hide behind something because you want to do something sketchy or because you're not comfortable enough with, you know, with, with what you're doing. Yeah, I have to say that for me, and I think also for, for a lot of other core members, but, you know, I'll let them speak their opinion. It was just a matter of privacy. Uh, you know, like uh, Italy, which, uh, for instance, is a very judgmental place. And I I always really, 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 really liked, you know, my personal privacy. So, uh, honestly, in my opinion, what's the book called? Lawyer. It's called Blockchain Masterclass. You're going to find it. Easily on Amazon.it for sure. But anyway, so I think the privacy is a very, very important, right? It's actually one of the most important human rights. So if we really wanted anonymity, we would have cha- we would have used like voice changer. We would have changed like, uh, you know, user every three months or something. Nothing. Or we would have like deleted all our appearances in public on YouTube or whatever. Uh, this is absolutely not who I am. This is absolutely not my idea. So it was just a matter of privacy. So, yeah, okay, uh, Marcos is right to me, keep it brief, get more, three more people, I'm so sorry, but I really wanted to do, to give you my, my opinion regarding anonymity and privacy. Sorry for having taken that much. Yeah, thank you very much, the law. You know, it makes out we have Dionysus, Dionysus, maybe you like to share a little bit more about your history and what got you into people. Hola, uh, yes, Dionysus uh, or Drew, um, as many of you I'm sure figured out a long time ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it buys off in the early days, um, when things were starting to kick off with, uh, you know, crypto involving in pocket finance and raising capital for different types of projects. Uh, Josh already mentions the whole carbon, carbon drop that they worked on. Actually, this is when Creole, uh, first got on off radar. And as he pointed out, like, I think. Everyone at one point was a bit suspicious and other groups maybe stalling at competitors. Um, but in the end, of course, there were different skill sets that came together to make something much, much bigger possible. Um, and Mark's pointed out it's a really true, uh, like Web3 story on this happening. Uh, and I think in general, when you're looking at it, went through tech, you're able to open up a much deeper level of collaboration than is possible uh, in, in the DCM currently, right? Um, and I think we're starting with teams of people just building together um, on different platforms. Uh, and in general, this is the highest the market on chain where you increase the, the, the transparency and interoperability of these assets. Um, so yeah, myself, I mean, background of the part market, I think I've spoken about that enough already. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, but how do you get into like that? Yeah. And, uh, Archie and how how the whole partnership started, you guys coming together. It was Daniel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so there, I mean, there was an opportunity with F2 pool for the offsetter. Um, mm-hmm. And then I, I think like starting to understand the tokenization thing was really interesting for us. So, as many of you know, like offsetter developed this, this carbon.fyi, the emissions calculator. Actually, most of offsetter's work is in the consulting space, I would say. Offsetra did a lot of work in a number of different blockchains related to emissions calculation when it's worked with the 
Polygon, Elrond, x -Di, um I'm forgetting a few others, I believe. Uh, but, you know, that that was like the, the, the main thing I did. It helped clients understand how interacting with the blockchain could affect their, their environmental performance, let's say. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of like a, a natural fit then to work with the group that was then more on like the, the offsetting side uh, to kind of help them with that. And the carbon dioxide community got picked up quite a bit, especially in the NFT community. Um, I think if you go back to like April 2021, there was, a, there was an unfortunate backlash because there were some carbon calculators that made it seem like one NFT mint was equal to like all the mints on one contract. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, uh, what was it like, uh, NFTs that there was no, uh, and crypto art WTF or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah crypto art WTF. That led to a huge backlash, uh, unfortunately, because I think in the beginning of that all happening, it was really just groups trying to understand, like, hey, what's what's the potential environmental impact of what we're doing and so on. Um, and then that led, you know, once that cooled out a little bit, it still led to a lot of interesting fundraising for, for types of different types of like kind of finance projects and everything. Uh, and so I've such just got a deeper teacher in that area. I eventually met with Tukem because Tukem was starting to think about tokenizing offsets as well. Um, and, you know, we had some interesting things lined up with Tukin in 2021, quite a while ago. Um, and then it didn't quite pan out then, but we came back together with, with Creole in addition of a year and a half after that. Uh, and then, you know, the rest is history. Well, definitely. This is really exciting to hear on it. I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not like blown away because that moment has passed for me a few days ago. To really hear about all you guys' history, but definitely for those who are listening, having to hear the history for the first time, this is really amazing. It's to hear things like, you know, back then, you know, hearing carbon.fii was like, wow, we have this thing that we want to work with. Oh, we're working with Austrian Oh, we're working with real. This is amazing. Then not realizing that the founders were actually from those places. So, yeah, it was really like they were unfazed when things like this happened. But you know, for us contributors, like wow, this is big for us. We are moving into the right step. Not re not realizing that we have been working on shoulders of giants. This is something that I I can't say enough. That it's really amazing. You're yeah, but really knowing now everything's on the back right now, and it was really good. And next up, we have Octi. Hello, hi guys. Uh, so I'm, my name's Alex. I, I also work with Offsetra. I'm one of Offsetra's co-founders. And uh, yeah, I've been, been on this journey for a number of years. Uh, my background's in environmental science, uh, master's in renewable energy engineering. I uh, spent some time doing policy work, kind of uh, moved away from, from academics after graduating to and moving into policy consulting, etc. And and yeah, I sort of started the, the crypto carbon journey, or must be four or five years ago now, um, with the offset of guys. As the, as the guys have mentioned, one of our kind of initial forays was, uh, trying to figure out the, the carbon emissions of blockchains. I think we, you know, we understood that, that Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, were these huge systems consuming a lot of energy, but we found that no one had already kind of got their head around how much energy. Um, so that to busy itself thinking about that and um, you know, kind of build awareness, educate um, and also allow organizations to, to offset their carbon emissions uh, if they so wished. I think there, there was an interesting kind of conversation in, in the crypto space, particularly the Ethereum space uh, a few years ago, whereby you had people who were pretty committed to the ethos of, of Web3 and, and the Ethereum ecosystem and, and they were going to keep using it. Um, and what may um and so so they kind of wanted a a way to compensate their emissions but they weren't able to in the way that you might traditionally compensate uh, in an org in an organization um in an organization you, you can kind of think about mitigation activities but obviously with the, the proof of work consensus mechanism there's there's no real option to mitigate emissions you kind of just have to offset them um so offset trick of that kind of provided a service for, for that compensation approach and, and yeah, just, we were just kind of learning the lay of the land. I think there was, there was a number of kind of initiatives that popped up in, in 2020, 2021, 22, um, 
you know, people have mentioned Dan Huang and, and the Baikal group. You know, they, they were in and around thinking about this. CJ's within the audience. So there's there's lots of people that have been thinking about this problem and, and the opportunities that, that Web3 has kind of offered for the, the climate conversation. And for us, yeah, we, we came across Creole and, and Toucan and uh and I think there was there was a high degree of alignment. Um, I think we we had a background in the carbon markets, all of us, and, and understood understood some of the problems with the carbon markets. We we had a background in DeFi and understood the opportunities of, of DeFi, and yeah, sort of serendipitously came across each other, and and Klimadao was kind of formed out of that that group identity. Um, so it's been a really interesting, very long journey, um, and and here we are today. Yeah, I, I would agree with with Donnie, um, the, the lawyer, around this, this, this notion of privacy and um, and kind of why we decided to set up as pseudonymous or anonymous with Climadale. That said, you know, we, we have been um, attending events. I've, I've met um, a number of you in, in the crowd today at, at different events so over the past year or so. Um, and yeah, here we are today. Now, now we're fully docked. You, you guys know who we are. Um, and yeah, just sort of looking forward to to moving on from from this. I think it's been a bit of a whirlwind whirlwind over the past week. Um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing what what we can do now that the people know who we are and and that the community knows who we are. And um, yeah, we've got lots of exciting things to talk about over the next few weeks. And and I think you know who we are as people shouldn't add or detract to any of those releases that that clean it out the organisation, which is is much bigger than just people on this stage right now. Um, yeah, it's, it's more, it, it, more than just... it's it's also important to point out that some of us, especially you, Alex, you did like many many stages, like in person, like event in person. So this also shows like the fact that it was it's just just really a matter of privacy. Like for instance, last year I did uh, Web Three Dubai uh, fully doxed, and also you had a lot of occasion where you came out like as as oxymoron and Alex, right? So. Yeah. Everybody can so put the pieces, pieces together. I mean, this, this if we really wanted, like, right. see, if we really wanted to be ghosts, we would not have come personally to to events and and speaking with our faith, right? Yep, totally, totally. Yeah. Well, and it, it comes to like, you know, like the, the merit of the merit of obviously of the whole thing. You know, like you thought you would the DAO, right? We contribute. Just doesn't matter where you're from, like where you are. Uh, it's based on the output of your work, right? Like that's kind of a big piece of the the Web three ethos. Yep, yep. I totally had I one hundred percent agree. Like, you know, like for me, like you know, from where I am, where I was at, the, some someone was in the stage listening to office hours to where I am today. It was really just purely of how much work it, what I put in, how much output I came about. It was never about who I was, what was my resume. But rather, how much effort I, I mean, how much work I put into it to be where I am today. So I personally think that many here have really shown their worth not through their past accolades or their past um, positions, but rather what they have already output to bring Clean My Down to where it is today. Yeah. So last but not least, I would love to have some time for the man with the uh, charismatic smile as his display photo. Let me have Thanks. So I think like in the initial stages of working with these groups, it was a bit combative at first, like meeting with Tukin and, and Creole and uh, unifying with etc. Um, but realizing like we had such diverse skills that really parlayed well together. And also, at least from my side, a general frustration with how the ATM operated in general. And a lot of conversations we had with artists or protocols that had calculated emissions and wanted to purchase and retire carbon offsets. Everyone kept asking for like an API or, hey, if we mint an NFT, wouldn't it be great if it could purchase and retire carbon in that same transaction? And yeah, at the time we were like, it should be a lot easier. Um, you know, I think... There are some groups that maybe had access, uh, API access with Vera, maybe some special relationships. I'm not sure. Don't take my word on it. But it was like there got the general consensus was there's got to be a better way uh, to do this. And tokenization of the carbon credits was something that just made a lot of sense. And I don't think one group could have achieved it alone. 
Um, it was really something that we had to um, put some differences aside, but realized like this was a pretty innovative project. And also we were uh, something kind of Archie and I've always joked about is we've always been very conservative in our estimates of what would have happened and sort of the success of the project. Uh, we had no idea it would sort of have this um, impact uh, so quickly and so soon. And I think that's a testament to these groups coming together and really putting, um, you know, their collective efforts uh, for, for a greater good. So in general, like a frustration with the system because, you know, it just, it had to be better. The The old system was really slow and janky and um, needed to be improved. So just wanted to reiterate that. I think there's a, there's an email from like 2020 or 2019 from off that you're asking Vera for an API to do automated retirements. Yeah. They didn't have much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, assumed, we, we assumed like, Hey, there's gotta be a way to plug this in. There was so much. Awesome. And guys, you know, what's crazy. Did you guys hear? This is pretty wild. Five years later, Vera finally announced their API. Huzzah. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what all one little back to that you on use it. Yeah. Martin, oh yeah. Well no nah, <laughs> early Mark, to, like oh, go ahead. All you. I was just saying like in the early days, uh, there was also a tremendous amount of FUD and misunderstanding of the cryptocarbon emissions. And that was something that we picked up early on. Like, there's a huge opportunity here to set things straight. And with Alex and Drew's background in, in um, you know, carbon accounting and those mechanics, it really allowed us to come from a position of knowledge. And there was just so much media FUD um, on these emissions. Now, they're real, uh, but what was, you know, quantified or reported in uh, mainstream media was not always accurate. And so, you know, that was sort of a, a frustrating experience. Like you always assume best intentions with groups and reporting, but uh, the media had a heyday with crypto carbon emissions and we wanted to set that straight. And so we also realized too that, you know, building the system on a blockchain that was energy efficient, uh, like Polygon, uh, would be a way to sort of dog food our own product. But yeah, like early, early NFT days for carbon emissions was very, there were a lot of threats. Brutal. Yeah. It was yeah. Brutal. I mean, I remember Martin Weinstein from uh, OEF, who he did like three videos, interviews with Coindesk, all talking about the emissions of like trying to set it straight because it was just so like absurd. So you can go dig them up. I'm sure they're somewhere. But like, yeah, every, there was a lot of people trying to fix it, right? Because it was just so blown out of proportion. And I don't see anything about it now. It yeah. has run their market. <laughs> but yeah, it's gone. <laughs> those, those narratives seem to be squashed. So, um, but at the time, it was like pretty bad for the entire crypto community, but especially people building um, climate finance related projects on blockchain. Just they kept saying, oh, this is, you know, ironic. And why are you doing this? And so, yeah, it just came from a, a way of wanting to set things right and provide that accurate information. Yeah, totally. So now that we have everyone um, here with us, and most of the core members have been uh, talked, what does it mean for us right now for PMIDOT itself uh, moving forward? Like how, has, uh, how does it affect us? Or what does it mean? I mean, business as usual, we're continuing to building. I don't think we're ever going to stop. That's always kind of like our, been our motto between, behind everything we do. Um, that just means that we can show our faces, talk to people a bit more. It means that, you know, people know who we are now. It might make a lot of conversations actually a lot easier. Uh, there's a lot of people who were very opposed to the pseudonym kind of idea. Um, obviously people familiar with Web3 and crypto never really had a problem with it. It was more like the traditional, you know, TradFi people that don't seem to get to the concern for privacy. But... Yeah, nothing changes. I mean, as you saw, we're still building them, and it's not going to stop. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. We're we're still going to do everything that we we promised. This now, yep, yeah. So I do want to um just kind of wrap up this section of the uh of the the docs party. Uh, did anybody from the people that were docs anybody have any last 
things they want to say about this before we kind of wrap up and move to questions. I think we're good. All right. So I just want to make a couple of final points about some of the other things that happened and in, uh, in the history of Klima Dow and also some of the other things that have been alleged. Um, yeah. Uh, in the recent days. So uh, one thing I, I want to point out is that consent-based decision-making was used within Klima Core. Um, so there was like an informal majority vote governance process in place. And if in any point Klima Core disagreed about a decision um, that was of strategic importance, right? It wasn't just like a simple thing, like what color to make the font or something like that. Um, you know, there would be a process where people would decide which side of the issue they wanted to support. And if there was a majority decision, then that was the decision that was adopted by the DAO. Um, cause I believe personally that Klima Core was a DAO before Klima DAO was launched, um, because of the unique nature of the founding. So, um, I hope that's clear to everyone and I'm happy to discuss that more if, if you'd like. Um, the other thing I want to point out, um, is that there have been questions already asked in the, um, in the Slido, and, and it's it's something we wanted to bring up already, which is just like why Toucan went their separate ways. And uh, my understanding is that Toucan intends to make that part of the story clear from their perspective in you know very short order, I think as soon as this wraps up. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, and from my perspective, um, I, my understanding of the situation, um, basically there was a decision made within the core team that it would be more appropriate for the bridging technology to be separated from the um, rest of the sort of economic system or the tokenomic system that the team was building uh, for two reasons. One is sort of an appearance potentially of like conflict of interest or like there's one organization that is like vertically integrated and trying to dominate the entire space, which was very much not the objective. It's really to build an ecosystem where people can collaborate and build uh, build coordination games, coordination systems um, that scale up climate action dramatically uh, and facilitate a sort of robust a competitive ecosystem. Uh, the technical term for what we are trying to do is called coopetition. Look it up; it's you know available. It's like a combination of cooperation and co cooperation and competition. And the basic idea is captured in a meme that we have been using. We inherited it from Olympus DAO, and it really does hold true to this very day, which is called three three. Um, and I'm sure many of you know this meme as three three, which is you know the same idea. Um, and the basic concept is incentivized coordination. So if we all agree that we can win together and we can win together more than if any one of us instead tried to win alone, we can cooperate or rather coopetate, right? We can be competitive and cooperative at the same time by supporting each other in building on top of one another and doing things together that bring value to the whole space. Um, so I hope that's clear um, on the first point. And then on the second point, there were some like, you know, personal differences. I think everyone's aware that like the communication style and, you know, professional um, sort of demeanor and way of working of, you know, people varies a lot. <laughs> um, and obviously when you bring together a group of 12 people from three different organizations, uh, things can vary a lot. So there was a lot of, you know, um, sort of friction between certain team members and it just created a situation where people felt it wasn't productive to continue working together. So a joint decision was made that, you know, Toucan would go and do their own thing, build their own organization. That would be a bridge, a bridge, you know, um, in a different, you know, segment of the market, right. Than the Klima DAO itself. So they wouldn't be competitive entities necess you know, necessarily, right. They have different business models. And in fact, they're actually key partners, right. They were required for launch, right. You had to have a bridge. To, to do what Klima DAO was trying to do. So um, in that sense, it's very clear that um, that partnership survived the departure of the Toucan team members from the Klima Core um, composition. So I hope that's clear. If there's any follow-up questions there, I'm happy to elaborate um, to the extent that I can, but I, I would keep that an eye out for Toucan's perspective on the issue. I think there's yeah, a exactly. decision as uh, well. I think also that probably Toucans will like come out with something or... Um... You know, let's, yes, they've communicated to let's, us that that's clean out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's leave that in there. Um, but I just wanted to provide that context. So finally, there's one other issue we need to discuss before we move on to questions, and I'll do, I'll do my best to lay it out concisely, and then we can go into it more if there are more questions or if the core team feels. So um, the other issue that was raised in the allegations is around an entity called C3, which is a key partner of Klima and was conceived from the very beginning to be a key partner for Klima, not. A kind of any kind of you know have any other relationship with Klima DAO. It is a partner organization, 
And the partner organization was created in collaboration um, with other partners in the space, um, specifically a group of traditional carbon market experts um, who were interested in um, exploring what tokenization could do and, and how they might be able to bring value to the, the um, digital carbon ecosystem. And so they approached the founders of the leading, in, you know, it, the leading organization in the uh, nascent refi space, um, the nascent digital carbon market. And they said, hey, Cleanit Core, you, know, you guys did had great success with the launch of Cleanit out. You've really changed the conversation about the role of, of blockchain and, um, and digital technology in carbon markets. How can we offer value to the space? How can we create value for this space that we would like to enter? And basically, Cleanit Core said, sure. Um, you know, we'd love to help you add value to the space and build on top of the great work that Klima Dao has already done. Um, and so they assisted. I think that the most important thing here is like, um, you know, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Marcus, but uh, like uh, too many for too much information. I think that the most important thing is like uh, the fact that like people wanted like to add more value to the space where we where we were. Of course, we were like different like times in the market, but you know. Uh, it was good also for us to see that there were like different organizations that would come and say, hey, we're going to provide you the tech. Because I think that the most important thing is that here, considering that Tukan, um, Tukan protocol, like the bridge is it's closed source or anyway, it's like even if it was open source, uh, I guess it would be un unlicensed. Like they started like from from scratches, you know, just from an idea, like to build their own bridge. So I think that, you know, if you look at like us as neutral, which of course, which is, which is what we want to be. And considering that we want to like grow the space for, for the sake of the space itself, because we, we love what we're doing. It was very great to see actually other people that they would come and say, Hey, we want to work with this. Like also from a te technological perspective, we don't want just like to, to just like sell credits. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the most important thing. But the e people that relates to the, it's, it's bet capital, right? Like the network effect that we're all striving for. I think that's one of the big pieces is we want more and more organizations directly involved with Klimadao and DCM, right? And so the, there, there are so many DCM players that are starting getting getting involved in this space. That's good. And the more traders and the more project developers, et cetera, that are all engaged in the DCM, uh, the greater the, the, the DCM's value for the whole industry. So, yeah, and I just, and as, as Hard Rock Nick said, and he said it best, I need more tons bridged on chain. Yeah, so I want to elaborate sure. and clarify some of what we just said. Um, so one thing just to clarify there is that um, there was a desire to create competition, you know, uh, among bridges, and that is something that Toucan understands, that everyone understands, that competition is healthy. That's what I was just saying, right? That coopetition is the game. We need to compete yeah. fiercely, but toward a, a shared goal where we don't tear each other down in an effort to like get to the goal before anybody else or something like that. Because um, we get there together, not alone. So I hope that's clear with C3. And if there are specific questions, of course, you can ask. Um, we may not be able to answer them, but um, C3 has recently announced their special office hours where the team that is you know actively working and shipping and doing all the shit at C3, um, they're going to be talking about all their work, who they are. Um, and giving an update on the organization. So definitely go check that out next week. Yes. I think we can move on now um, yes. to... Um, I think we can move on now to questions. Um, and, and just one last thing before we move on to questions, I want to remind everybody, like, nothing has changed about Klimadao. We are still here. We're still building. Um, we have an upcoming product that we just announced, you know, last week that we're really excited about, and we think it is the next stage in the evolution of Klimadao and lays the foundation for our future growth. So... Um, I, I really just encourage everyone to be open-minded about this situation. We are doing our best to repair um, any damage that was done to the reputation of the DAO um, by, you know, what happened this week. And also that we're, you know, establishing relationships with all the key players in the traditional carbon market to make sure they understand that uh, these allegations are based on hearsay and, and, and half-truths, and, and we are here to clarify the truth of the situation. Uh, finally, we have a report due out by our decentralized working group. It's been a little delayed, but it is uh, in its you know final review now. Um, and honestly, um, now that um, these things have, have occurred, um, I think it's going to provide a lot of clarity for the path forward on, on the DAO. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that coming out. So keep an eye out for that piece um, in yeah, the next few weeks. Finally, uh, I think we can do questions. Yeah, there's a couple in the so, Slido that I can answer right away. Um, 
I don't know, recommend if you want to go through them, but last couple, so like starting from the bottom up, what percentage of tokens were held by T core team in Oct 2021? Uh, it's less than 2%. That's always been the case. Um, you can look that up on Dune. <laughs> it's all there. And it, they, everyone is, is still holding. Uh, how many core members are not part of the core team any longer? That's just two Ken. Uh, that's no longer here. Um, so, I mean, they, 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 they run, they run, they have their own things to run. So it's, they're just separate. I, I will clarify that just a little, Archie, uh, that, um, it's the only group that's departed, right? Um, there have been yeah, yeah, yeah. come and go. That's totally normal for any kind of organization. Yeah, yeah. People that want to move on or work on other things. So, totally. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can also everybody can else address still here. a quick question. Um, Marcus is my actual first name, and I'm very happy to tell anyone that in person. Um, you can easily find out who I am from all my conference appearances and, and whatnot. Um, but I just really value the you know stoic virtues that Marcus Aurelius espoused in the meditations, and I will continue to represent myself that way um, in all my online communications and, and in, in person. Yeah, totally. I can answer these ones. Almost happy investor, whoever this guy is, because uh, it's definitely it's definitely addressed towards me. To talk smack on Twitter on uh, on <laughs> DeFi projects and just brings animosity. <laughs> I understand it, and uh, I've been told many times to to dial it down. So I I, uh, <laughs> I definitely do it once a quarter now, uh, and not not uh, not as much as I used to. But I mean, two things. Like one thing is you got to be able to criticize, especially your own space, because if you don't, it won't ever improve. We can't just celebrate stuff that isn't good and you 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 do have to be objective and look at things and say look that doesn't work that well this isn't the great this could be improved on and we accept criticism too right like hfc's is a great example that was like our biggest criticism for a long long time and we addressed it we just took it out burned it no one can criticize it anymore now we have a much better product you know you can't accept criticism about your product it means you're unwilling to improve and that's a very different attitude to how we feel we definitely want things to improve believe me i really want to see amazing products i really want to see great stuff i really want to see great things but when i all i see is just like nonsense it's really hard not to like call it out and and one thing too is like as we grow as an industry and as we grow as a space we'll start to reach into more and more um ecosystems that are outside of crypto outside of web3 outside of refi you'll start to reach into places where they've never really interacted with crypto at all. And these people will be able to objectively quantify what is real and what is not. And they'll look at stuff and it'll it'll be bad if the majority of projects in here are, you know, not delivering any sort of value to the space. So it's important that we keep a, a tight ship on, on running everything nicely and, and really seeing, like, you know, progress and, and that kind of stuff. So I agree. It's time to level up our PR. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to. I promise I won't. I won't say too many inflammatory things. Uh, but I, I, I still think that we should, you know, openly criticize uh, things that you know or deserve criticism for sure. I mean, that's that's um, that's never going to change. I think that's that's really important. Uh, the next question, which is, how hard is it dealing with Twitter drama all this time? Yeah, I mean, it definitely. We struggled for like two years to deal with narratives written about us in the press and the media. Uh, competitors that basically never got anywhere, um, you know, basically they're always coming after us saying that we're like these toxic people or that we've done something like to wrong them. It's hard. It's hard because like, and that's kind of also why we, we stuck by our pseudonyms for so long is because we wanted our work to proceed all who we were, right? We didn't matter. We didn't like, we left our identities behind, even though we very, very easily could have leaned on them and said, Hey, look, we built this before. Hey, look, we did this. Hey, look, we did that. It's way easier to be like, look at my work and judge it yourself uh, than it is to, to you know, lean on, on your name, right? And so it's it has been challenging. And I think slowly things are changing. Like, people will definitely see us differently. I mean, I said this once in, in the DAO, and I, and I explained it, like, on our one-year one anniversary. To make it to one year as a crypto project in production makes you immediately a statistical outlier, Right, this is like ninety nine point nine percent of projects crumble in the first year. Either they simply don't make it, they abscond with the funds, you know, you know, all sorts of stuff. The fact that we're almost hitting two years. I mean, March is technically two years when we got together as core, but the launch was, you know, obviously in October. So that's when we'll, we'll really celebrate two years. That's the, that makes us insane, like in terms of stats. Like in crypto, like two years of still being around, that's it's nuts. Like it's 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 unbelievable stats so i'm i'm super you know bullish on on the team and everything we've built and 
you know, how we progress definitely as, as an organization. Uh, I think this weekend was amazing. I think everybody met. Everyone was, was super valuable. I, I was super excited to meet people I, we've been working with for so long, like Reichman, you know. <laughs> yeah, he started the podcast, like r- running one of the most yeah. successful Spotify podcasts ever. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like just, you know, stuff like that. And it's, you know, we're, we've definitely matured as an organization, and, and I think we're ready for the next phase of, of building this further. Uh, well, there's a couple more questions. Yeah. yeah can I, uh, can I address some of these quickly? Uh, so I just want to say a few of these we're not going to address because it's not appropriate at the moment, given everything that's happened. So like any questions about like why two can behave the way they did, or, you know, I, and I'd say any animosity that you still harbor as climates like toward two can, I'd really encourage you to just put that aside right now while we tell this story yeah. and get the truth out there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, later we can have discussions about how things should be done in the future and all that. Like that's a part, part of governance. Right. But Let's put that aside while we uh, totally. while we come together. And like on that point too, like I love those guys. I I think they're brilliant. I I, I truly think that. I truly think the two cans, the original guys, are geniuses. Like they definitely can put stuff together. They really you know all work hard. And it's just we went our separate ways, right? And like that's it. I mean, and and, and I, that, I truly... an cooperative system that has to be okay, right? If, if people yeah, decide they want to build together alone, right, together but separately, that's totally okay. Um, okay, so the other thing um, around what JE made him, how why he paid the way he did, you know, I was trying not to even name the guy. I, I think, yeah, I, Marcus, you know, I think we'll just have to skip over this. I think, yeah, yes, yes, I think we're just gonna skip <laughs> the guy. Yeah. So, this, yeah. this is what I just want to make sure everyone knows. It's we're not, not gonna, gonna address, about think, yeah. we're not gonna address anything about what you know, anything, why he did anything. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, yeah, yeah, um, can't speculate. Do you so, think uh, not, uh, not immediate for this sort of thing will ever become socially acceptable? Uh, we tried i mean we got close i think i don't know <laughs> about the rest of you guys what you guys think drew and alex like i think people have started to accept that we were kind of different i mean we always have been yeah i don't know it's it's an interesting kind of juncture that we're at i think uh i think a lot of the the foundations of theme that were based on collaboration and incentives you know, market forces, etc. Um, if we, it seems like, well, we've been doxxed, right? Um, so it seems like one part of the kind of Web3 ethos has been pulled away from Refi, at least for the time being. Does that mean other parts of the, the kind of ethos are pulled away? Decentralization, um, interoperability, all these kind of ideas that, that we think about and we talk about, are they also gone now? I don't know. And then maybe there'll be another refi project that's that's synonymous, and 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 maybe we can can reevaluate whether synonymity has has a role. But at the moment, uh, I think all refi projects are now fully quote unquote dots, unless I'm, unless I'm missing any. So let's see how it goes. Let's see how the conversation evolves. I think what's what's interesting for us is we have tried to link up DeFi with an off-chain market, um, and I think we've succeeded in many ways. Um, but obviously when you're integrating with an off-chain market, the expectations are different, the narrative is different, the conversations that you have on a daily basis are different. So yeah, I agree, Archie. We, we gave it a good shot uh, and we, we didn't succeed clearly. But um, yeah, let's see what it holds. Yeah. 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 So I think on that note, I think, we can wrap up here. Yeah. Yeah. Was about, um, well, so, so you yeah. mm-hmm. uh, Sorry, Marcus, before we I actually want to dive a little bit, just a little bit on Tabamak. Tabamak is something that a lot of us have been really, really excited about. We have the you know marketing team, the partnership team has been like you know, it heads down, diving deep, you know, trying to, you know, bringing this up, you know, to to the world itself. And maybe, you know, now that we have really done the doxing, we have done the questions, maybe let's just dive a little bit about what's Tabamak and what's next to come. Yeah, so I, I sort of touched on that a little bit. Um, I mean, I know Sai is here, and I don't know if you want to speak, Sai, to the upcoming product announcements we have and, um, you know, sort of what our vision is for Carbon Mark. But I, I will comment briefly on sort of the question of co opetition in the context of Carbon Mark. I, I mentioned this last week as well. Um, we really envision Carbon Mark being the foundation on which many different organizations can build various forms of co opetitive, you know, products or services. Um, whether that's, you know, traditional off-chain brokers using CarbonMark to replace their over-the-counter market, you know, where they are able to have like a storefront 
type view, right, where they're like offering listings um, of projects that they can, you know, that they have the tons for, and um, maybe even, you know, offering different services or different data that is unique to those, you know, service providers. Um, also different front ends, right, where people could build different front ends for the on-chain um, smart contracts that that operate CarbonMark, um, which, you know, all this stuff will become open source once um, the product is launched and we have the appropriate licenses in place. Um, so yeah, I look forward to all that. Um, Sai, if you have any, um, if you have any points, uh, on that, feel free to accept. Yep. He lost his voice. So yeah. I lost his voice. Okay. Well, I hope I did all right. Um, otherwise I think we can wrap up. Yeah, yeah. I, I think with carbon mark, uh, there'll be announcements coming over the next couple of weeks. Um, lots of content for people to kind of sink their teeth into. And then of course we'll, we'll be here to answer questions. Uh, yeah. As Marcus said, it's, it's, it's the next natural evolution for Kingdale. Uh, we think it's super exciting. No fee marketplace. Um, so keep your eyes peeled and I'm sure we'll, in fact, yeah, we're having a dedicated webinar for the product, uh, in the first or second week of April. So yeah, you guys will, will absolutely be kept up to date on that. Yep. Don't forget that. So for those who have been here, thank you very much for staying for the past one hour and also enjoying the technical difficulties we had at Peter Spaces. Uh, do watch out for our upcoming onset screen, uh, where you can actually find out more about Carbon Mark. So, you know, the link is uh, in the uh, event uh, on the Discord where you can actually uh, sign up for it. So do sign up for it, you know, join us, find out, listen out, and find out what Carbon Mark is all about during that um, webinar itself. Really, really looking forward to be there with you guys. And once again, thank you everyone for being here with us. This has, this has been an incredible journey for me, myself, and for many of you guys here out there. Uh, just to wrap up a little bit before we end it off, I think uh, Marcus has actually made a very valid point for the record. Uh, most of the contributors will still stay pseudonymous. This doesn't mean that everyone has to be doxxed. It's just that um, some of the founders have been doxxed and we are just putting out to light. Uh, just again, the whole idea of it is just more for privacy. So just think about that. If not, thank you everyone. Thank you for being here. I wish you all the best. And please listen to the new, newest episode of Land of the Climates. Let me do a bit of shilling where we actually interview Oxy to find out about the, uh, the origin of Clean Metal. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. And thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers, all. Cheers. Bye. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.